<laughs> the blue spot. What's up, everyone? I am Jason C. And today on the Master Drone, we have ourselves a rather unique Irish whiskey. That's right, Irish whiskey. For the first time since the 1960s, there are four colors in the spot range of single pot still Irish whiskeys with the arrival of the Madeira Age Cast Strength Blue Spot. Let's learn more about the spot lineup, review this, and test it against the legendary Red Breast 12 Cast Strength right here on the Master Drum. So the spot range of whiskeys, meaning green spot, yellow spot, and red spot, are a throwback of the old days when the big distillers didn't bottle their own whiskey. Instead, merchants all over the country would buy an aged new make spirit and sell it under their own brands. The spot whiskeys were created by Ireland's longest running wine merchants, Mitchell and Son, dating back to 1805, where they started as confectioners in a building which now houses the largest McDonald's in Ireland on Grafton Street in Dublin. I'll have a McRib with that Irish whiskey, sir. So they began buying spirit from John Jameson and Sons Distillery on Bow Street in 1887 and filling it into empty wine casks, mainly Sherry Port, Malaga, Madeira, and Marsala casks. Now, they would mark the age of the whiskey with the corresponding spot of color on the barrels, blue for the seven year, green for 10, yellow for 12, red for 15. The cool thing is they have old price lists dating back to the early 1930s, which showed all four whiskeys together for the first time. But gradually, however, the Irish whiskey industry contracted and independent bottling died out. Green Spot survived, uh, now made at the New Middleton Distillery in Cork, but Blue Spot was discontinued in the 50s, and the other spots like Red and Yellow followed and were discontinued in the early 1960s. But today, things are completely different when it comes to the Spot lineup. Today, Green Spot, like you see here, is available globally. Now in NAS Expression, it contains whiskeys between seven and 10 years old. Yellow Spot was reintroduced in 2012 as a 12-year-old whiskey aged in sweet Malaga casks. And then in 2018, we had the 15-year-old Red Spot come back, aged first in bourbon and then Marsala casks. Even though Mitchell & Son wine merchants no longer play a role in making the whiskey, they add much more than just heritage to the brand. Sixth and seventh generation Mitchells, Jonathan and Robert, who champion the Mitchell & Son brand, still run the business day in and day out. But today at long last, the final step in the vertical is back. This is the revered blue spot, which remained underground until now, and its introduction reunites the historical spot family for the first time in over 56 years. All right, so the whiskey, there you go. Let's give this one a pour here. So the whiskey, just like the maturation profiles you see in yellow spot and red spot, this release uses uh, whiskey that's matured in ex-bourbon and ex-sherry casks with the inclusion of a wine cask component. In this case, we are using Madeira casks. Now, they say that the age range for all the whiskeys in here are between seven to 20 years old. It's been bottled at 58.7% ABV, which is cast strength and will vary from batch to batch, non-chill filtered, and it retails for about 95, basically a hundred bucks. All right guys, so while this opens up a little bit, you know, let's talk a little bit about single pot still Irish whiskeys. It's a very unique style of whiskey in Ireland made with a mixed mash of malted and unmalted barley and up to 5% other grains according to the Irish whiskey technical file. So the technical file in Irish whiskey identifies the, all the stages of Irish whiskey production. We're talking brewing, fermentation, distillation, maturation, blending, bottling, and labeling. It's a very technical set of guidelines, hence the name technical file. You can actually find the technical file online. I'll leave a link to a PDF down below, and if you wanna read it, it's really long, but it's actually pretty interesting if you're a whiskey nerd like I am. So single pot still Irish whiskey is the style of whiskey which actually set Ireland apart in the 1800s when Irish whiskey was the most popular in the world uh, before everything got contracted. It's this style of whiskey which today fuels many conversations on the differences between Irish whiskey and the other great whiskey types in the world. 
So the unmaltered green barley that's used adds texture to the distillate, you know, makes it a little bit more oily or creamy, aids to the creation of the signature pot still spice. Uh, it's a style that's been championed by the biggest player in Irish whiskey industry, which is Pernod Ricard, which is why you see the Spot and Redbreast Irish whiskey brands talked about so frequently. But like I mentioned, we're gonna compare this to the Redbreast cast strength once we taste through this. Let's go to the nose, let's see what we get. So it's classic pot still nose. I mean, you get some beautiful pineapple apricot notes and you get that spice, that spice that I just talked about um, from that unmalted green barley, just delicious. Yeah, there's definite maltiness to it, but underneath all that, this beautiful aroma of pineapple, apricot, cinnamon. There's a, there's a very distinct mintiness to it that, that's starting to come out of the glass. I wasn't getting it at first, but as this has opened up a little bit, you're starting to get this nice mint characteristic. There's a hazelnut note in here. Now, um, you know, if for those of you out there that have had Nutella, <laughs> um, Nutella on some nice toast in the morning has that, like that hazelnut spread. There's a little bit of hazelnut in here. Not so much chocolate, but that hazelnut characteristic. Great nose. It's so, you know, when you get into, you know, premium offering Irish whiskeys, you realized how fruit forward they get and how tropical they could get. The pineapple and apricot really come to the forefront. This is not, you know, you cannot think of this as a Jameson type profile. This is something a little bit richer, a little bit darker, and definitely a little bit more complex. All right, let's give it a try. Here we go. Holy geez. Woo. You talk about tropical notes coming out of here. I mean, you get pineapple all day long. You mix that up with some of that. I mean, I'm getting some of the bourbon in there too. A little bit of that caramel. Really the pineapple and caramel kind of dominate the front of the palate. A little bit of that apricot as well. It's very spicy, very creamy and oily, you know, being that single pot still. Let's go for another sip of this one, see what happens. This is just like how I like pretty much all whiskey. I like it sweet. I like a little spice to it, a little bite. It's oily. So you get the, there's a little tiny wave, I think of the sherry uh, on the very, very back end. It's like a slight little raisin note I think I'm getting. I mean, it's very slight. Maybe it's like cherry or, or raisin. There's like this bright fruit note on the back that I'm trying to get, or a dark fruit note, I should say, that's, that's coming through as, as cherry or raisin. I think that might be the sherry influence, but it's kind of covered by like the spice on the back end of this. This has a nice long ling lingering cinnamon spice finish here. Uh, and then you kind of couple that with all those sweet pineapple and apricot flavors. Go for another sip. Yeah, still caramel, pineapple, apricot, all couple up front. As soon as it works its way back, you get like that splash of mint and spice. It's like someone dusted some black pepper on some mint leaves and just, you know, and you ate them. And then right on the back end, a slight, slight touch of the sherry finish. Uh, but then all the, that, the pineapple, a little bit more of the, a um, little more of that tropical flavor takes over. Yeah, the finish is long here, guys. I mean, it keeps going and going. Just a ton of cinnamon, like I was talking about. That spiciness, the pot still characteristic, that bite that it has. I mean, if you're looking for an Irish whiskey that's really smooth, this will not be a smooth one for you. This, this one has some bite to it, but it also has the flavor and the viscosity to back it all up. Also a little bit of a, like a brown butter note going on the back end too. One last sip, and then we're gonna compare this to Redbreast Cast Strength 12. Here we go. It's actually getting easier to sip as you, as you sip along here. Just delicious. I just love the combination of those tropical flavors and the spiciness. You know, it's interesting, they use those same two components, the bourbon and the sherry and all the lineup, and then, you know, they kind of switch it out with a different wine cask. You know, the green has like that nice, you know, apple note to it. The yellow is, is a little bit more honey forward. Uh, definitely a lot of caramel and vanilla in the yellow spot from what I remember. Um, red spot is all red fruit um, and a, little, a lot of nuttiness as well. Now the blue, in contrast, I mean, this is more, this just seems like it has more heft to it, more spice. Um, the Madeira casts, I think, are really adding that nice nuttiness characteristic to it. Yeah, the Madeira is just like bringing that little bit of a hazelnut funk to it, which kind of rounds out the tropical flavors and the spice bounces all out. It's a beautiful, beautiful Irish whiskey. So I'm gonna pour some Redbreast Cast Strength 12 and we'll do a quick comparison. 
All right, so we have the popular Redbreast 12 cast strength, which is the other darling of the Pernod Ricard lineup when it comes to cast strength Irish whiskeys. Redbreast 12 is always popular among whiskey enthusiasts as just, uh, just a hitter of an Irish whiskey. Um, it's cast strength. My particular bottle is 58.2% ABV. Uh, it's also aged in X sherry casks. So it's gonna have some fruitiness to it, but let's do these head to head and see how they compare. Here we go. Well, I gotta say the blue, the blue spot is much richer on the nose. There's way much more going on when it comes to like rich caramels, the apricot, the pineapple. Now on the Red Breast 12, so on the Red Breast 12, I get much more malt and I get more of a, of a pear influence rather than the sweetness and the tropical notes I'm getting on the blue spot. You get that nice like buttery biscuit note you know, that you get from a good Irish whiskey. A Little bit of raisin, you know, from the sherry cask. Definitely some floral, you know, hints of apricot too. Not as strong as the, as the blue spot. Oh my God, the blue spot is just opening up so nicely. God, the caramel is really starting to come out of the blue spot to go along with those pineapple notes. My goodness. When it comes to nose, the blue spot takes it. All right, let's go to the palette on the Redbreast 12 and see what we get. Oh, the Redbreast 12 is so good. It's buttery and, and, and cinnamon. Again, that single pot still bringing out the spice, the baking spices, the cinnamon, the black pepper. But this one goes more towards, you know, apple and pear for me rather than the pineapple and the apricot on the, blue, on the blue spot. Another sip of the red breast. Yeah, it's so buttery and there's a little bit of that brown butter note in here that I was getting the blue in the blue spot, but it's a little bit brighter. The, the apple and the pear notes that are in here, it's like stewed pears that have been sitting with like a, you know, and like just been like being poached in like a pot with like cinnamon sticks and uh, just getting all those flavors. A little bit of those rich brown butter notes. One more sip of the Red Breast. The Red Breast Cast Rank 12 too is also very oily. That single pot still really brings some nice heft to it. A lot of viscosity. A ton of vanilla on the back end too to go along with those baking spices. Let's go compare it to the Blue Spot real quick. I think the, I think the triple cast just give it other layers of flavors here. This is more classic. You got the sherry, you got the cinnamon, the, the, the spiced apples, the butteriness to it. But the blue spot, just that hazelnut nuttiness that I'm getting, I think from, you know, the Madeira cast, the Portuguese Madeira cast they used in this, uh, in this bottle, just really gives it just such a beautiful balance against those pineapple, the apricot, the rich, like the dark caramel notes. It's so good and sweet. Man, these two Irish whiskeys are perfect examples of why Irish whiskey is actually becoming the fastest growing segment in the world right now. As you may have guessed, Irish whiskey is pretty much dominated by Jameson and you know, that's changing. Irish whiskey is actually the fastest growing spirits category in the US. It's actually not bourbon. So in 2019, Pernod Ricard pretty much owned, you know, owned 80% of the market share of Irish whiskey in the US. In 2010, there were only four distilleries in Ireland producing and selling Irish whiskey. By December 2019, it went up to 32. The truth is we're seeing more diversity with Irish whiskey these days, and I think the rules allow it. Distillers can alter their single malt flavor profiles. You know, for example, different distillation methods can be used, double distilling versus triple distilling, uh, cask finishing, and the types of wood for maturation. Unlike Scotch or bourbon, Irish whiskey does not have to age in oak vessels either. So the category right now for Irish whiskey is growing, and just ripe for innovation. So if you haven't paid attention to Irish whiskey lately, maybe you should. So let's go to the final breakdown of the Blue Spot. All right, so for the final breakdown, the price of this, like I said, is about 95 to 100 bucks. Let's just say 100 bucks. Uh, availability right now is gonna be probably pretty limited. This was supposed to launch right around this time, January, February time. Uh, this just popped in my area just recently but it sold out real quick and I'm not sure when we're gonna be getting more. Uh, now this is a new you know, addition, or I should say a resurrection to the lineup. We're gonna be seeing these blue spots as we go down the line. Since this is cast strength, we're gonna be seeing varying ABVs from batch to batch. Uh, but now that these are starting to hit the market, if, you're in the, if, if you love Red Breast cast strength 12, you're gonna absolutely love this, so keep an eye out for it. Now, when it comes to value, I'm gonna say, you know, not great. And the reason why I'm gonna say not great is because 
What did I just compare it against? Redbreast Cast Strength 12. Redbreast Cast Strength 12 is 12 years old, got a nice big 12 year old age statement on the front. This says seven. Even though there might be some older whiskey in here up to 20 years old, we don't know how much, but it doesn't matter because if you're looking at the shelf, you're gonna see 12 versus seven. You're also gonna be looking at the price. You're gonna see Redbreast um, at price around what, 65 bucks-ish about, and this at about $100. So you're looking at about 35, you know, $40 cheaper in some areas for the Redbreast 12 versus the Blue Spot 7. So I think competitively, this may have some issues, but flavor-wise, I actually am leaning towards the Blue Spot. Uh, the most I'd pay would be the retail price for this. I really wouldn't want to go over it because I know I could just grab that Redbreast cast strength if this is actually overpriced. When it comes to recommend, this is an absolute yes. It's absolutely delicious. I love this type of flavor profile in Irish whiskey. There's just not enough of these cast strength Irish whiskeys that are available to the mass market just yet. Everyone sees Jameson, everyone sees a lot of these, you know, these, these usual brands that are on the shelf and are not exploring the category, as I just mentioned, which is just growing so fast. Brands like Teeling, Redbreast, as we just tasted, you have Glendalo, you have Napa Castle, you have um, uh, Powers Whiskey, just putting out some great stuff that are higher ABVs, mix of cast, uh, mix of cask maturation, uh, single pot still, triple distilled, double distilled. Definitely just go try them all. But I think this one really stands out. If you're a fan of that Redbreast 12, I mean, you may not want to buy this for 100 bucks because it is cheaper for the Redbreast 12. But I'm telling you, if you if you're that interested in cast strength Irish whiskey and you're willing to pay the 100 bucks for this you will not be disappointed. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this review for the brand new Blue Spot seven year cast strength Irish whiskey. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this yet, if you've seen it in the wild, if you've gotten to try it, what you think of it. Uh, are you someone new that's exploring the Irish whiskey category? Have you not tried enough? Remember I said, this is a very fast growing uh, category, especially in the US with everything going on and all the innovation that's happening. So definitely give it a go. And like I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share with. So cheers and welcome back, Blue Spot. Hell yeah. Cheers, everybody.